Next we're going to look at building the interaction between the rigid body rocks that are falling and the actual uh, surface of the mountain. To make this happen, we're going to create a brand new point cloud. Create an empty point cloud. We'll open up an ice tree and we'll create a simulated ice tree on that cloud. Now under our particle emitters, we want to create a splash based on the collision of two geometric objects. And this emit splash compound only works with geometric objects. So we can create splashes between multiple emitters or multiple splash objects. And in our case, the splash object being the rocks, we're going to have 48 of them connected into our splash geometry input. Our emitter, of course, is the mountain. Let's connect the output of the emit splash into the input of the ice tree. Let's look for a simulate particles node to get the particles moving over time. Plug that into the second port. And we are going to need to have an emitter object, the emitter being the ground. And as far as the particles go, the boulders that are going to emit the particles based on the splash, I'm going to group them all together by creating a group. Call this my boulders group. And I'm going to pull that into my graph. So I can actually supply the group for my splash geometry rather than having to get uh, God knows how many objects and plant them into a group geometry node, which would then pipe into the splash geometry compound, or to provide 48 uh, inputs for the splash geometry. If I double click on the emit splash from surface collision compound now, I can see what my effect looks like. I'm going to kind of minimize my ice tree, kind of bring it down here, minimize my explorer, deselect my rocks. If I hit play now, I'm getting something happening, except I can't really see the particles. If I was to move into a wireframe mode, you would see that there is a number of particles being emitted here. So let's uh, set our shape appropriately so sphere looks fine, and let's set the particle size to say 0.6. Let's see how this works now. Okay, so I'm leaving a number of objects behind based on the interaction, the collision of the objects. The problem is they're kind of flying off in space here. So I'm going to slow them down. Uh, add some randomness to their uh, direction and speed, and add some gravity to the overall equation. I'll even randomize the size so we get uh, a few different looks. So back in my ice tree, I'm going to randomize size, value by range, and if our size at the moment is 0.6, then we'll specify a random size between the values of, let's say, uh, 0.3 and 0.7. I'm also going to make sure that the mass of each particle is randomized as well. So I'll multiply my existing randomized node driving the size by a scalar value. Essentially, I want a relationship between size and mass so if I take a small mass or a large mass and I multiply that, or sorry, a small size or a large size and I multiply that by a value, I'll get a small particle with a smaller mass and a larger particle with larger mass. Now if I multiply by 1, I'm going to get the same number. I want a smaller mass, so I'll multiply by 0.5. So a particle with a mass of 0.3 or a size of 0.3 will have a mass of 0.15 and a particle with a size of 0.7 will have a mass of 0.35. Okay, that looks pretty good there. I'm going to add some gravity through my forces uh, compound. So in the forces menu, I'm going to want to add forces together. I'm going to pull in a gravity force. And I also want to add a little bit of drag to the equation as well. Uh, a lot of times in cases like a splash, the particles do tend to get away on you. So a drag force will just slow them down. Again, the particles will be moving through a, a more viscous type medium rather than having no resistance on their velocity. So drag adds a force opposite to the velocity force or to the velocity direction uh, vector. So I'm going to add in some drag and execute that into the second port of my ice tree. And I'm going to have a very minimal amount of drag. Point 0.1 is a, a fair bit. Uh, it'll actually slow down the particles quite a lot. So I'm going to start with a small strength for now 
to see what I have. I might also raise the number of particles that are being emitted as well. I'll double that. So I'll just say uh, times 2. So I have 40,000 particles. And I'll also increase the splash distance threshold, threshold. Right now when our boulder intersects with the ground, we get particles being emitted within one unit of that boulder. So I want to increase that distance so particles can be emitted within, say, two to three units of that boulder. So even in the splash distance threshold, I could even multiply that or randomize that by a range as well, too. So let's say splash distance threshold. Uh, we could say something like uh, two and three for our minimum and max. So we have a, a varied amount of emission based on distance. OK, uh, that's not looking too bad. We could also add a bounce effect so that the particles understand to bounce off of the surface. So if I play what I have now just to see what I need to do, we can look at adding in a bounce effect uh, afterwards. So I'll roll back, frame one kind of look up our mountain here. Extreme upshot. I'll let the particles go, or let the rigid bodies go. So we're getting a lot of particles being emitted where the boulders intersect the, uh, the surface of the mountain. And of course, we do get them falling down. Problem here, though, is that they just go straight through the grid. So not very good. We can also uh, reduce the amount of drag as well. They look like they're moving a little too slowly. So I'll take the drag down to about 0 0.04. So let's look at adding a bounce effect. 